Imagine having your feet broken and bound when you were a child and living with the pain and deformity for the rest of your life. This was the reality for millions of Chinese women who practiced foot binding, a fascinating and controversial custom that lasted for over a thousand years. Foot binding was not only a way of altering the shape and size of the feet, but also a way of expressing beauty, status, and identity in Chinese culture. In this video, let's explore the origins, prevalence, and decline of foot binding and examine its significance in fashion history from different aspects. Let's begin. To understand foot binding fully, let's step back into history. The practice traces its roots to ancient China, gaining popularity during the Song Dynasty. What began as a cultural practice evolved into a fashion trend that transcended centuries, leaving an indelible mark on Chinese beauty ideals. Beyond meeting cultural expectations, the allure of bound feet extended into the realm of male preferences. In a society dominated by male ideals, small, bound feet became a symbol of rarity, elegance, and sexual appeal. The pursuit of this aesthetic fascination, however, came at a price, a price that women willingly paid to conform to societal norms. And let's not overlook the footwear. Lotus shoes, elaborately embroidered, decorated, and laden with symbols, they turned into an art form. The pride and craftsmanship displayed through Lotus shoes made them more than footwear. They became treasures. Now let's talk about how foot binding influenced not just beauty but also the clothing choices of women. The garments they wore became a canvas, concealing or revealing their bound feet, adding layers of mystery and allure. Women with bound feet navigated their world through distinct clothing choices, each playing a role in shaping their posture, movement, and overall elegance. The long skirt, a classic choice, covered the feet and legs entirely. Crafted from silk or cotton, it featured intricate patterns and colors. Occasionally lifted slightly to reveal the lotus shoes, this flirtatious move added an enticing allure. The long skirt allowed women to walk with small, light steps, embodying grace and femininity. For those seeking a bolder statement, trousers exposed the feet and ankles more than the skirt. Typically made of wool or cotton with a loose fit, trousers were more common in northern China and among ethnic minorities. Considered daring, they provided women with more stability and speed, reflecting practicality and adventure. The robe, a symbol of modesty and dignity, concealed both the feet and the body. Crafted from silk or brocade, it boasted a long and wide fit. More prevalent among the upper class and royalty, the robe restricted movement, emphasizing submission and obedience. Now, give a glance into the nitty-gritty the process of foot binding. Picture young girls, starting as early as three, enduring a painful ritual. The tight wrappings, designed to reshape bones, symbolized not just beauty but submission to societal norms. It was a fashion statement that required immense sacrifice. The process would begin with either the mother of the girl or another older woman from her family, such as her grandmother, clipping the toenails of the girl's feet, and then soaking the feet in either hot water or a special concoction of ingredients that ranged from various nuts to herbs. This was done in order for the tissues and bones of the feet to soften in order to easily facilitate manipulation. After soaking, the feet were then massaged and doused in alum, a chemical substance that is used in the dyeing of cloth and also causes the skin to tighten. The process would begin during the months of winter so as to allow for the cold to numb some of the pain experienced. As a girl aged, she would have to perform these acts herself. After two years, a small pair of folded feet would be achieved. In order to ensure that the toes did not return to their natural position, foot binding would continue for a further 10 years. In total, a young girl would endure 12 years or more of excruciating pain through this extreme body modification technique. As we navigate through this complex background and process, foot binding reveals itself as more than a fashion trend. It was a form of control. The excruciating pain and physical limitations imposed on women served to keep them close to home, reinforcing societal norms. In this historical cat and mouse game, foot binding played its part in shaping societal dynamics. Beyond societal control, foot binding evolved into a status symbol. 
What began as an elite practice soon became a symbol of wealth, transcending class boundaries. Families sacrificed physical labor to bind their daughters' feet, showcasing the lengths people went to climb the social ladder in the name of fashion. It also varied by ethnicity, class, and region in China. The Han Chinese used it to differentiate themselves from other groups and resist foreign rule, especially the Manchus. The upper class used it to show wealth and status, and to secure good marriages. The lower class used it to cope with hardship and exploitation, and to increase their value and attractiveness. Foot binding was more common and extreme in the South, and less so in the North. It also used different materials, techniques, and durations. Despite all the odds, you won't believe it became a strategic tool for marriage. Men influenced by societal norms preferred women with bound feet. Families saw this as a means to secure not just a suitable suitor but also elevated social status and shared wealth. Yet, as fashion trends often do, foot binding transcended class boundaries, transforming into a status symbol. Originally confined to the elite, it evolved into a practice embraced by all classes, symbolizing wealth and societal standing. The sacrifice of physical labor for the sake of binding feet showcased the lengths to which people went to climb the social ladder. Amidst the beauty and cultural significance, there's a darker side, health complications. Foot binding wreaked havoc on women's physical well-being. From deformed feet to severe posture issues, mobility limitations, and the risk of infections, the toll was immense. The paradox of beauty extracted a hefty price from those who embraced foot binding. Now the lingering question did every Chinese woman partake in this ancient fashion ritual? Surprisingly, no, but at that time almost 50 to 70 percent women were following a fashion ritual. While foot binding was prevalent, it wasn't universal. Various factors such as geographical location, socioeconomic status, and evolving cultural norms played a role in determining who embraced this practice and who resisted. As we conclude this journey, foot binding was a fascinating and controversial practice that shaped the fashion and culture of China for over a thousand years. It was influenced the beauty standards, clothing, and identity of women in China, and it reflected the changing ideals of femininity, gender, and society in different periods and regions of China, and also raised questions about the role of women, tradition, and modernity in Chinese society, and how they relate to fashion and culture. So what's your thought on this unique and complex phenomenon? Do you even want to imagine doing this? In the name of fashion share your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something new and interesting. Don't forget to subscribe Riches to Rags for more videos on all about modern fashion and evolution from history. See you next time. Take care.